today, we're going to talk about one of my favorite formulas is Gibbs free energy equation. Uh, so here we have it, delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. What I love about this is the brilliance that it embodies all three laws of thermodynamics. This really is going to be equivalent to first law, temperature's third law, and second law is the delta S. So bringing all of our thermodynamics together, we can wrap this in one ball and call it delta G, Gibbs free energy, pretty cool. Um, so let's break this down, look at units. Uh, of course, delta G, there's our free energy, kilojoules per mole. Uh, delta H, enthalpy, also kilojoules per mole. Temperature has to be Kelvin since we're dealing with this uh, third law of thermodynamics. And then delta S, this is where you have to be careful, is entropy. And here's why you have to be careful. You need this to be in kilojoules per Kelvin. Okay, that's going to be the unit. And let me put a little note, it will be times mole. Understood that it's kilojoules per mole times Kelvin. Um, but the issue is that tables will give you delta S in joules per Kelvin times mole. So be really careful. You have to divide the joules by a thousand to bring it to kilojoules. Just be aware, just be aware um, that units could be a little tricky. You want everything in that kilojoules, kilojoules. Okay, so I have um, a couple of notes to watch for. Um, if uh, the problem says that they're at standard conditions, just them saying standard conditions, they expect you to know that that's 25 degrees C, that the temperature will be the 273, oh, excuse me, 298, let's put that in there. Uh, 25 plus 273 is the 298.15 Kelvin. So if they say at standard conditions, you automatically put in that 298.15 Kelvin, 25 plus 273.15. Um, now, this is kind of interesting, a way that they can ask a certain question. They could say, at which temperature uh, will this reaction become product favored? And so they're really saying, at what temperature will delta G be less than zero? That it will be negative, a negative delta G. Because remember, negative delta G is spontaneous. That's going to be product favored. Um, and when you have that negative delta G, there's energy available to do work. And that's what we want. We want to be able to harvest that energy and use it for something productive, to move mankind forward. How do you like that? Um, so here's the trick. If they want to know at which temperature, uh, it will become product favored, spontaneous, you'll get um, G greater than zero or negative delta G. Simply set delta G equal to zero. And then from there, the answer will be an inequality. Now I'm going to do two problems for you, and I will do one problem that is going to include that inequality. Okay, so here's example problem one. We want to find delta G for our Haber process, so cool. Uh, nitrogen plus hydrogen produces the ammonia. If the delta H is um, negative 91.80 kilojoules per mole, and if delta S is negative 0.198 kilojoules per Kelvin times mole at 25 degrees C. Uh, so we're going to plug everything in. Notice I already converted this. If it had been at joules, it would have been, um, Let's see here, negative, point, or negative 198 joules per Kelvin times mole. I would just divide by 1,000 joules to get that to kilojoules, and there's your negative 0.198 kilojoules per mole times Kelvin. Um, so be really careful. It's got to be in kilojoules, and I took care of that for us. Um, now, a way that they could do this, they could give you nicely the delta H, delta S, or they could give you tables and expect you to calculate delta H using products minus reactants and calculate delta S using products minus reactants. Be a fair amount of work, but you can find delta H and delta S if it's not given to you using thermodynamic tables. And you can look on the entropy uh, playlist if you need help with that. You could also look on the thermodynamic heat to find how to calculate delta H. Okay. We're given delta H, delta S. Let's go ahead and plug into Gibbs free energy. So we're going to have delta G equals my delta H, which is, this is going to be negative 91.80 kilojoules per mole minus the temperature. I'm at 25 degrees C. Let's add that to the 273.15. And that gives us the 298.15 Kelvin. Remember, they could have said, uh, find delta G at standard conditions with delta H and delta S, and I would go, oh, standard conditions, code, I have to use 298.15. That's going to be standard conditions. Times my delta S, which is negative 0.198 
kilojoules divided by Kelvin times mole. Notice Kelvin cancels, so we have kilojoule per mole plus what? Kilojoule per mole, perfect. And the answer on this, when we do the calculation, delta G is going to equal negative 32.8 kilojoules per mole. Now, I want to pause for just a second and talk to you about signs. This is important that you under, understand the signs. So because this is negative, that's going to be spontaneous. Great. Notice I have an exothermic delta H, negative delta H, that is also spontaneous. But check this out over here. I have a negative delta S that is going to be going from um, this order to order. That requires energy. That's non spontaneous. That's not spontaneous. So just wanted to pull out another reminder because the exothermic part is the spontaneous part. This requires energy. It's going to cost us something. Um, this would be called enthalpy driven. Now, if you're not familiar with this, go to my um, entropy and free energy playlist and you can get the lowdown on entropy driven, but a great, great place where we could connect this. Um, okay, nice. Now, this is one where they're asking for the temperature and you're going to answer with an inequality. So example number two, uh, they want to know what's the temperature needed uh, for the decomposition of this uh, mercury two oxide to form a mercury liquid and an oxygen gas. And they give us delta H, they give us delta S. So let's go ahead and plug everything in. Um, now, oh, let's see, so on this, sorry, it should have said at standard conditions. We'll do at standard conditions. Okay, so if I look at, um, oh no, 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 so sorry. Not at standard conditions, forgive me. Um, if we look at our equation, I'll tell you why I had that for just a second. In essence, it looks like we have two unknowns. You have a delta H, there you have it, and you have a delta S, and they want to know at what temperature. And so for a second, you pause and go, oh wait, well, what's delta G? And that's what I did for just a second, I'm sorry. Um, what's temperature? I'm like, oh, it should be standard conditions. No, it's not. We want to know the temperature. That's the question. So if I want to know the temperature, here's the trick. You put delta G as zero, and I'll show you why. I'll explain to you why. Put delta G as zero. So we have zero for delta G equals uh, 90.83 kilojoules per mole um, minus T, that's my unknown, times, and notice I saved us some time, I went ahead and put that in kilojoules, um, 0.10827 kilojoules per Kelvin um, times mole. Okay, there we have it. Um, so if we do this math, now I'm going to divide this over. Um, so if we divide it over, we will end up with a negative 90.83 equals a negative T times 0 0.10827. And notice when I divide this, 0 0.10827, we will have, let's divide by the negative, negative 0 0.10827. The negatives will become positives. Uh, this will cancel out. Notice I'm going to have kilojoule per mole. Let me show you the unit. Kilojoule per mole divided by kilojoule, kilojoule per mole times Kelvin. Kilojoule per mole cancels, fraction divided by fraction. We're going to end up with T as temperature. And the temperature on this is 839 Kelvin. Okay, now I put that as an equal sign. Help me with this. If I come to this formula right here, if I put the number 839 right there, when I have this enthalpy, that entropy, and that temperature, K equals zero. But I want this to be negative. I want it to be product favored right here. I want it to be spontaneous, which means I actually want a negative number. So here you have to think about signs. I have a positive value here. And in fact, let's write this down really quick. So you've got this positive, endothermic, which is non-spontaneous. That costs us something, okay? We've got a negative, there's my temperature, and this is a positive delta S, which means we are going from order to disorder. That naturally happens, that's spontaneous. Okay, so thinking about temperature, 
Well, if I want a negative number here, because this is going to be negative times positive gives me a negative, I want the biggest negative value possible to overcome that positive enthalpy. So that means I need a temperature greater than 839. If I put in 840, this will be a little bit bigger. 840 negative times this positive 0 0.1082 is going to give me a number that will be bigger negative plus a smaller positive, <gasps> negative delta G, which is spontaneous. So here's the inequality that we're going to put in here. I want the temperature to be greater than, greater than that 839. And going back to what's driving this, is it the enthalpy or the entropy? What's providing the negative value on this? It's the entropy. So this would be entropy driven because is whatever is spontaneous is what drives it. So the entropy is going to drive it, which means I need a bigger temperature, higher temperature so that we can get a delta G, which is less than zero, which will be a negative delta G. That's what we're trying to get at for the product favored. So you have to think through the signs to know which way you do the equality. Do you want a really large temperature so that you have a large number for your delta S? Or do you want a low, small temperature so you have a small value for delta S? And then you can do the inequalities. Okay, there you have it. Love it. Gives free energy. Have a nice day. Thank you.